Hi, this is Philip from the Galborn Library, and I'm here today to tell you about how to fix your car using the library. We have two different resources for people to use. One, we have our repair manuals, and two, we have OBD2 readers, which is the little handheld computer that you can plug into your car and it'll tell you what your check engine light warning is. Hi, this is Philip from the Galborn Library again and I am in my car today to show you how to use OBD2, two, OBD2 sensors that we have here at the library for checkout. They'll allow you to check any sort of engine issues or codes that you have on your car. Then you could use that to diagnose the problem and get the right parts, as well as come to the library and get Chilton's manuals to help you replace that part to save you some money from a mechanic. Inside, you will get one of these fun devices, which is the reader. And it will plug into your car using a trapezoid no plug. So it can only go in one way. On my car, the plug is right in the middle, but your car could be different. Sometimes they're over way on the left, kind of up and under, or all the way on the right. They also sometimes aren't bare like mine are. Sometimes they have plug covers. So, uh, look for something that shape. The second thing you want to do is have your keys in the car and have them turned to the on position. You don't necessarily need your car started, but you do need to have the keys in it and it will check your car for errors. Now my car doesn't have a check engine light, so it comes back clean. Everything's running great. If you hit escape from the monitor status screen, it'll allow you to read codes as well as erase codes. When you've fixed your car and you've read all the codes and got them taken care of, sometimes they don't go away. So that's when you'd want to erase the codes, but you don't want to erase the codes until you've at least attempted to solve the problem. Uh, when you've attempted to solve the problem and erase the codes, if they're still there, you could drive around and see if the code comes back. But just erasing the codes will not help you pass emissions or solve the problem. There is a small portion of time where codes will show up very temporarily for no reason and not go away. And this will take care of that issue, but that's super rare. And if you just erase your codes and go to emissions, they will not pass your car and they'll make you drive around quite a while and come back to see if the codes pop back up. So erasing codes can be very helpful, but don't try to use it as the only method of fixing your car or trying to solve a problem with your car. It's more of a diagnostic tool, really. When you're done, all you do is unplug it, it turns itself off, and then you can package it up and send it back to the library. If you end up needing to use one of these and need some help, you can always give us a call and I'll be happy to guide you through the process and help you get it taken care of and get your codes read out. All you'd have to do under normal circumstances would put OBD and then do a search for it. And that would get you a listing of our library of things. Unfortunately, that's being suppressed because we're just doing books at the moment and e-materials. But in the future, that's how you'd be able to get one of those to be able to do your readouts. Often you could also go to AutoZone or any of the other many uh, part shops and they'll check your codes for free and usually even give you advice on what you need to fix that. So once you have that problem solved, or at least figure out what's wrong with your car, then you can try to replace parts. We have Chilton's manuals. You could find them by putting in Chilton's manuals into a search, or often you could even search just your car type and year and it will tell you what kind of manuals we have. So we have a large variety of manuals usually going back to about 2000 all the way until more modern cars. 
but we only have so many physical repair manuals and sometimes they are checked out. So another good resource is that we have electronic manuals. So let's start off by going back to our homepage, galeborn.info. And this time we're gonna to go to books and more. And we're gonna go down over to databases. Now, on our databases page, we have all of our resources here. You can go all the way down to automotive. Uh, besides the children's manual, we do have information on finding resources if you're trying to buy a new car. So that's probably the easiest way to find it. Or if you go all the way up to all databases, it's under children's. We also have a small tutorial, but I'm walking you through it right now. Now, because I am logged into the library already, it didn't ask me for my library card and information, but if you're at home or on your phone or whatever, it will ask you for your library card and your PIN number. So if you have any issues or you have trouble remembering what your PIN is, give the library a call and we'll be able to help you with that. The number for the information desk is 847-429-4680. And we'll be happy to walk you through this, fix your library card, whatever issue you might have. All right, now, the Children's Library has basically everything. As you can see, we have manuals going back all the way until 1901. So based off of what car you have, what brand you have, Oh, I guess we have to actually pick a year first. There should be a manual for you. Now some of the really old manuals, like for the Model A's, or the cars in the 20s and 30s, aren't going to be that comprehensive. Because they just didn't have the amount of resources that we do nowadays. You'll also be able to find some, almost any car out there. So a lot of companies that don't even exist anymore. Um, like Hummer is for the most part defunct. They haven't made cars in years. Uh, as we're going through the list, Oldsmobile, I own a Pontiac. Pontiac doesn't exist anymore. Even have them for high-end cars like Porsches, the Mercedes-Benz. Anyway, if you have a car, Children's probably has a manual for it. So let's select the car that I currently own. Once you put in the year, the make and the model, hit select, and it will show you the online manual for that car. Now, there's a couple different areas. So let's just start off with repair first. If you checked out an OB2 sensor and per reader, and you found out what the code is for your car and got the part for it, then you can go in through here and figure out how to fix it. So let's just say, for instance, that I have a suspension issue and my car's springs broke and it's basically rubbing up against the ground. We'll go with rear suspension. And since our rear springs are broken, we're gonna do removal, installation, and replacement. And then from here, it will tell you every single part that's in the rear suspension that I chose, and it will give you instructions on how to fix it. So I said that the spring got broke, so let's see what it's like to replace the spring. All right, so it's gonna tell me what tools I require, and then it's gonna give me step-by-step -step instructions, and almost always they'll also give you a picture to go along with that. There is a click to a large, so you can make the picture bigger if it's not large enough. And as you can see, it's pretty extensive, giving you a lot of step-by-step -step instructions and a good amount of pictures and diagrams to replace this part safely and properly. It even gives you the right amount of torque you need, which 
is not always needed for some parts, but often car parts do need to be at a certain torque level to operate properly. So it even gives you that kind of information. If you wanted to listen to the instructions, they do have an audio version of it. Say you're uh, working on your phone and you just want to hear the instructions while you're underneath the car, click on that to make it easier. Or you could print it out. Again, you can log in on a mobile device and have these instructions with you, but I personally prefer to print it because I don't want to chance damaging my cell phone when I or getting it all oily and greasy. All right, so let's go check out some of the other areas. Say I don't have anything wrong with my car, but you just want to know what you need to do to properly maintain your car. This will have that sort of information for you as well. So they want a little more specific, so I have standard transmission, not an automatic. And it's gonna give you a list of items that you should check and or do maintenance on. And then what kind of maintenance level and importance that is. So for those of you who might be new to cars or new to the specific car and you're not quite sure how to properly maintain it, Chilton's will give you all of that information. Then the last thing would be labor estimates. So maybe you don't like to work on cars, but you still want to figure out what it's going to be like to fix your car. So let's keep it with the rear spring. See what it's like to replace it. All right. So it's not going to tell you how expensive it's going to be because it's going to differ by location. But it'll give you the amount of hours it's going to take. Now each repair shop charges a set amount, usually by hourly, and they have a system of figuring out how much time is going to take to change and remove that part. So say I went to a repair shop and asked them how much it was going to cost for the springs and they gave me an estimate and they said it was a three hour job. Well I can go double check here in Chilton's, even print it out and bring it to them and be like, no, this says it's going to be an hour job tops. It says it shouldn't even take that long. So if they're trying to charge you for three hours and this says it's only one, then you know that the shop probably isn't very reputable or you could possibly wheel and deal with them to get a lower price. Now that they know that you have a, a tool to help you keep them honest. Another interesting and important section for people who are car owners or are interested in becoming car owners is definitely the recalls. In the recall section, it's gonna tell you everything that was recalled from your car and you can decide if it's going to be let's try all systems you can decide whether it's going to be too much for you or not so if you're buying a used car you can get an idea of what could possibly go wrong with the car what to check on to make sure if that is still functioning properly and then you could even use that to argue a lower price saying for they recall this this and this all of those are still original on the car, so it's only a matter of time before they break, and that's gonna cost me this much, so I'd like $1,000 off my car. So that's the quick run through of Chilton's. If you have issues or have problems or even questions, the librarians at Gail Borden are always happy to help you. So if you need help using Chilton's or maybe can't find the parts you need, we'll be happy to look it up and print it out for you. Email you over the material, let you pick it up at the window, whatever is needed. It's for more ways of contacting us, there is the contact button up on the top, which I just clicked on, and that will bring you over to all the different ways you can message us. So if you prefer text message, you can send us a message at 847 
And then we have three different branches, which you should call the main branch, because that's where most of our Chilton's books are. So I hope you learned something today, and I hope the library's resources can help you save money on your next car repair and or car purchase.